We're part of the silver hand now. We need a theme song. I should have known you guys were going to be like, you have my bow. Like, for whatever reason, of all the things you guys could have done to derail that moment, that was like the one thing that didn't pop in my mind. Good job, okay. So you broke. Uh, Chris, good right, job, Dave. Christina Poor had to step out Dave. for a little bit. She did. Uh, but she said, Awesome. Good job, guys. Round of applause. Good job. You survived. We made Slowly. it to the silver hand. I'm assuming that was a reference to the boobies or something. With the weapon thing. Oh. No, yeah. that was from Fellowship of the Ring. When they're all at, uh, in Rivendell and, and the Fellowship forms and Frodo says he's yeah. going to take the ring to Mordor and Legolas is like, you have my bow, and get Brian, like, and my we're, we're, okay. Movie night. Brian, movie you night. Know, we watch the movie. You've been here this whole time. You watch the movies. <laughs> I watched it with you. Oh, the cutest <laughs> of the group. The oh my gosh! I thought it was a disciple. This guy. Get him out of here. I watched it with you. Yeah, I know you did. So you, one you time. Remember. He's one seen, time. You've seen it once. Um, I will not tell you how many times I've watched them. But I will tell you that it's more than twenty. Oh my gosh! Uh, At least. Well, my what family, like we we got the we got the extended DVDs like shortly after they came out. So we're talking like guys twenty years ago, um, and that means if I watch those movies once a year, we're already at twenty. Uh, but uh, especially like when I was in high school, I mean, we would take a Saturday at like eight a.m. and we would just put them on and see if we could just get through all of them in a day. And so, I mean, yeah. This, is, this year is the 20th anniversary of yeah. Fellowship of the Ring, the first one. That's crazy. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So oh we'll gosh. talk about that once this recording is over because what? people are still watching us. <laughs> All right, sense. we got a debrief. All right, there. guys, debrief. debrief. That was awesome. Let's give John a big round of applause. Thanks for leading us for so long. Good job. Good job. Good job. All right. Um, how about we go to each person? What was, um, uh, not just for the session, but maybe for the whole campaign, uh, where we are now, what was uh, a challenge for your character and what was something that you really liked about your character and their growth? So uh, how about we go over to Eldegar, also known as Brian. Oh, no. uh, I guess starting off, my character was supposed to be more of like a private person and not supposed to kind of stay to himself and all that. And after getting close to everyone and being able to see what kind of people they are, they kind of branch out, came out of the show, which I kind of feel like is me as a normal person, because mm. once I once I get to know people, I actually get out of my show. So, cool. Eldacar is a part of me. <laughs> Inspired. You put some of yourself Inspired. into Eldacar, yes. Yes, that's, does. that's the word. Awesome. Very cool. Uh, what was the most exciting part about playing Elder Card for you? Um, having to be able to tell y'all about the person that was supposed to be following me and then us being able to figure that out. Okay. So if y'all remember in my backstory yep. with the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. Yep. The... Oh, yeah, you know what? Save me for last so I can tell you guys some behind the scenes stuff you didn't know. Yeah, okay. Cool. So that's one story thread. Maybe we'll pick up sometime. Let's see. So cool. Thanks. All right. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar. What, what is something that was uh, really challenging for playing Chad? Well, Chad, you know, part of his backstory or his background class is called Doomed to Die. So for those who read the book, <laughs> will know that you get to choose out of character class. So one of his defining traits was boldness, which is, you know, he's, because he's kind of come to terms that he's going to die in this mission, then it says, if you're already doomed, then there's no sense of being cautious. cautious. You meet every challenge head on. So Chad, uh, his solution is he's pretty confident in his own abilities. He's confident. But he's also confident in state that he's going to die on this adventure path. So he's not afraid of any challenge. So I think his challenge was obviously the reoccurring theme of becoming a team player, even when, as the name implies, a Chad thinks that he kind of knows the best for everything. So 
you know, him kind of learning to slow down a little bit, even though constantly, you know, like his red hair and red beard, he wants to keep on being the fire, keep on going forward consistently. So that was probably a challenge, just, you know, self-control, I suppose. Yeah. I, I thought you stayed in character very well. Annoyingly <laughs> well at times. <laughs> well, yeah. Good job with that. And then what was a positive thing about playing Chad or what was something that uh, you're excited about his character growth or, you know, that- well, I just think he's fun to play as, I mean, I think like, I think like in every party, there's always like the wild, wild card. So it's always fun to play as the wild card. Cause it's kind of like Chad is not the smartest guy in the world. Uh, so it's kind of fun to just kind of, you know, make plans that may not be the best plans in the world, but just to see where they go. So I think that was my, my, my that was my enjoyment as the character is really going down the paths of almost most resistant because that's kind of where the road is going to lead Chad, I believe, in the long term. is He's probably going to have to go down the harder road. So, you know, I think that that was kind of the, 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 the joy I had of playing him is not playing a cautious character at all. I think that was fun for me as a player so awesome and i thought as a player you played them very well so thank you sir thank you. <laughs> uh let's go to Haley, played by hannah uh what was a challenge of playing your character so uh, i think going into the campaign i thought we were going to be in a lot more cities uh and that the like initial journey through the Merkwood was just going to be a small portion of it um, Haley is definitely more adventurous than most hobbits, but that's compared to hobbits, compared to like normal like humans and elves and, and all of the above. Um, she's, this was still very much a stretch for her, especially because she's used to going from city to city instead of being like, you know, in the heart of the wild <laughs> in a sense. And I think what kept her kind of going other than, you know, we're fighting the shadow and that's the right thing to do was she kind of became the mom of the group and kind of like kept everyone like on track. And uh, I mean, Cyril and Torin kept people on track as in like focus, but she would like, you know, make (laughs) breakfast, calm people down, have a talking to them if they need a talking to her, like that kind of stuff. Yeah, I feel like. Which is is funny because because when she first joined the group, everyone was like, who's this kid? Um, <laughs> even though she's like in her 50s. Um, <laughs> oh, that, you know, she's in her 40s, but still. Uh, and uh, yeah, so that was an interesting thing with like having to uh, navigate not being in cities like I had expected to be in. Really cool. And what was one of your favorite things about playing Haley? Um, so one of, there are two things and one of them is just, I love the uh, creativity that comes with inspiration. Um, and I, I, and before every game, I try to prep new songs. Like obviously this session, I didn't get a chance to do those, but it just coming up with those is pretty fun. And the delivery of those is fun. And when she got the mithril armor, she almost sort of became like in, in, invincible not invincible but you know you see this little hobbit and i've got all this dexterity and she's really tiny and then you add miss mental armor on top of that you got an ac of 18 so this little tiny hobbit's like running around <laughs> in melee range and mm. it, it's just abnormal which was just fun so funny to me awesome thanks for sharing uh, and I loved your song, so that you did an awesome job with your inspiration, and that was uh, definitely a fun part of the campaign. So good job with your creativity. Um, all right, so Edra Hell, played by Gabrielle. Um, what was uh, a challenge for playing your character? Challenge for playing it was actually the role playing more, more like more, most mostly, mostly because of. Uh, like the the wants of the character, the reason that he was going out, he was traveling around was because of his son. So it's like, okay, well, what happened to his son? What's going on? What's going to happen afterwards? And then finding this band of misfits that are way younger than he is. So it's, it, it, it was kind of like sons to him also. So at, at the same time, like trying to see 
his son in each one of them and saying like, oh, well, this is wonderful. Like all these little kings and perks that each one of them had. So, and trying to keep him alive all throughout. Mm -hmm. Cool. Very cool. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> that that was a twist. Chad was your son the whole time. <laughs> Daddy. Oh, uh, what did I do wrong? <laughs> what did I do wrong? Dad, dad. <laughs> <laughs> Can I give them back? Uh, I want milk. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a plot twist. Uh, so what was one of the things that you enjoyed about playing Edra? Um, in itself, him being um, an elf and like just, just like the perception checks and many things that were so useful during this uh, encounter, regardless of the, of the role of the dice or whatever it was, it was still very fun to see how it could be of so much help to, to play this character that was skillful in many things, including bow and arrow, for example, right? So it's like, oh, well, he can play both ways, but it's like a bow and arrow, so I can like really master it in a sense. And it really helped with damage. And uh, also with the survival skills and, and many things that happened throughout the forest. So uh, awesome. I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed your interaction with Alagos um i thought just you really respected her as an animal as a, like a, a sentient like being and like this this really majestic horse so um if we ever did any extra adventures or i don't know maybe fan fiction or whatever i don't know joel maybe we can work on some short stories i would love to see like kind of how your relationship with her grows so that's cool I know uh, Christina isn't here at the moment and having some technical difficulties, but uh, if I had to guess, I don't want to speak for her, but if I had to guess, you know, she, this is, it's my understanding that this is her first time playing a tabletop role-playing game. And sure. so uh, to getting to see her growth, like not even just her character's growth, but her growth and like adapting to that, learning how to do it, getting comfortable doing it was cool. Well, and, and uh, there were there were several times where it was like she was kind of a natural, you know, like uh, some of the role play stuff she picked up really quick. And, uh, yeah. you know, I felt like um, Christina did a really good job uh, socially with uh, responding how her character would respond. Um, and, and that part seemed to come very natural to her now. She's not here to speak for herself. Maybe that was actually really hard for her and she was stressed about it the whole time, but it didn't seem like it. Um, it seemed like uh, it was pretty easy for her to kind of jump in and just kind of do whatever Dala would do. Um, it's good. I, I liked her I liked her line today. It was like, stronger than you. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, you like that. <laughs> I'm all about the line three. And and that, that was the best and, line. Yeah, I like that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dal, Dal definitely had some great like moments and stuff. So we will do a uh, uh, interview with Christina too, so to get some of her, some of her thoughts. So yeah. um, I shall interview myself, and then we will go to John. So for me, challenge was um, uh, I think a, a challenge was um, I really liked Cyril, and <laughs> he died. Uh, <laughs> I hate when that happens. Um, no, uh, to explain a little bit, I put a lot of thought into his background and stuff, and just growing up. Um, a lot of my favorite fantasy like movies and stuff didn't have a lot of people of color in it and uh, in Tolkien's world it's focused on one area and there aren't a ton of people of color so I try to work really hard to figure out an in lore reason why you know Cyril would exist in the adventure and um, we didn't get too much into that but um, so when he died I was like oh my goodness what what, what am I going to do and so creating Torin um, was to be honest, just to fill in a couple of holes we had in the party, we needed a healer. <laughs> we needed somebody uh, who could do a couple of different things. Uh, so I think my challenge was to be fair to Torin and actually make him a real flesh out character and try to create some backstory for him. Uh, and so uh, I think that was a challenge for him. Um, positives, I think, uh, as far as Cyrell, I really liked his backstory. I really liked, I, I felt like he was a fully fledged character. Um, and I felt like he got a good send off with the scene with Will and stuff. Uh, so I thought that was a good wrap up to that. I think for Torin, I think I, I'm, 
I didn't get a ton of time to kind of fill him out and and like my accent and mannerisms kept changing because I was still trying to hear him out. But I thought he helped the party a lot with just lore stuff and and some health stuff. And um, so and I think he became a really cool character. And if we were to proceed again, I, I would like to dig a little bit more into his background. So, uh, yeah. Uh, John, what was some, <laughs> I'm afraid to ask this question. What was some challenges for you? <laughs> oh. Trying to hurt cats, AKA our group. <laughs> hmm, challenges. Um, I think, you know, uh, one of them honestly is the format. Um, I uh, uh, don't really do online D&D very much. Um, there's one campaign aside from this that I do via Discord, um, but it started in person and moved online when we had various people move around the world. And so you know, that's what we had to do. But uh, I'm very much a sit around the table, have a map kind of person. And so even just adapting to where like all of the combat was like all theater of the mind, um, which, which I, I can see in my head and I can do it, but um, I'm a weirdo that loves spending hours crafting maps. <laughs> and so um, that, uh, that was kind of weird, but spoiler alert, we're thinking about how to make that happen for the next thing we do, which I don't think we're talking about. So I'm not gonna say anything, but. <laughs> secrets <laughs> we're always brainstorming things <laughs> yeah, well my brain doesn't turn off so it's constantly storming i gotta use it for something cool awesome uh, what were some positives uh what were some things that you enjoyed yeah um uh, it was it was different right it was uh lord of the rings um which was fun it's a a, a setting that is beloved by many including myself um you know, Tolkien uh, is nearly unparalleled in world building skill. Um, you know, I would say, uh, you know, for, for any of our listeners or potentially any of you, but I, I don't think most of you probably read much in this genre, but um, Brandon Sanderson, Robert Jordan, Patrick Rothfuss, um, really, really good world builders as well. Fantastic authors. Um, but Tolkien was kind of like, the beginning of of that genre really taking off and he did such a phenomenal job you know we, we joke about how the lord of the rings exists just so that there's a reason for all of the languages that he created to exist which is almost kind of true um and and uh you know he just he poured so much into that world um that some of the most fun for me was just getting to explore areas that we haven't seen in the movies and the books be explored nearly as much. So the Mirkwood and, and spending several sessions just getting you guys out of the Mirkwood and then from the Mirkwood to M and R N, you know, in the in the movies you see the you see the the dead marshes in two towers. I think it's two towers. Um, it might be Return of the King. But uh, uh, just those locales don't have a lot of time spent in them. And so it was kind of fun to get to really dig into those areas because there's a lot of stuff out there that he wrote and that he put out there, um, but you just don't see it in the movies. And so most people who have only ever seen the movies, there's just, they don't know too much about the Mirkwood and stuff like that. So it was fun exploring that. Nice. Cool. Thanks. All right, guys, two more quick questions. Uh, so, um, uh, next question. What were some highlights real fast uh, of the campaign for you guys? What were some highlights of the campaign? Yep. Okay, and all of the campaign or just for today? The all the campaign. Uh, Cyrus, death. I think, yeah, yeah I, I was going to say, like, I think I got entire bad out battle, the, the Urukai, and Cyrus, death, I think was probably like the most suspenseful part of the camp. I mean, it was, it was like, I think that was like, like, like where the height of it was like, oh, wow, this thing could really turn south really quick. So I think yeah. that was probably, you know, I think that, you know, that was definitely the fight that I think will stick with us for the long, longest time. Yeah. Yeah, I was jokingly going to say the highlight of the campaign for me was killing Derek's first character, um, <laughs> which is a joke. I feel bad for Derek because like, 
right? He really did want Cyril to be like the leader of this group. Like, yeah, we're going to have this amazing leader, this amazing sword, and it's going. Yeah. <laughs> it was unfortunate, yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, that was only the third time I've had a character die in all of my time DMing. The other two times were both my wife's character. Yeah. <laughs> Does oh. Cho count among yeah. those? Yeah. No, I killed. Crazy. Uh, oh, oh, I guess uh, that does count. Yeah. Mm, yeah. <laughs> but I, I think like another big highlight is I really liked everything that Haley, Haley did. I think that uh, I really liked just, I thought it was just all the holes, some elements that she added to the game. So great, great job, Hannah, just role playing. Haley, I think it was a good, I think that the party chemistry would not have been the same without you playing the character you played. So yeah, I thought that every episode, I feel like Haley had a great highlight in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. I would agree with that. Haley was very different from Sam Gamgee, but filled the same kind of role where Sam was kind of the glue that kept Frodo together until the end. And I feel like Haley was kind of a glue that when everyone else was getting stressed or angry or whatever, Haley was always like, who wants a cookie? <laughs> it's time for snacks. You know, like this was, this was like the, the caregiver of the party uh, was kind of how I saw Haley's character kind of um, develop, which, you know, everyone had very important parts to play. And um, that just happened to be Haley's part. I liked seeing how uh, Haley and Chad's relationship developed because mm. there was a lot of tension and um, everything from the initial conversation they had to like conversations they had after that and like doing things together in the fights as well as in the social encounters and just like seeing the little changes like the like Haley's still always gonna find Chad annoying, but they like there was a lot of development there. And I think, you know, every character had their own like funny moments, but I feel like Chad and Haley's relationship was a lot of the humor <laughs> of the of the uh, campaign. I'm gonna say Chad himself was a highlight. <laughs> Thanks, man. And, uh, <laughs> <open his mouth. laughs> it was really interesting. Chad was equal parts a driving force to keep everything moving and also a driving force to derail everything. <laughs> Either way, he was a force. It was it didn't matter. It depended on which way Joel took the character, but in some sessions, things only happened because Nebuchadnezzar made it happen. And then other <laughs> sessions, things never happened because Nebuchadnezzar prevented them from happening. <laughs> it was awesome. It was, uh, it was definitely a force uh, to be reckoned with. Yeah, and I, and I really like it. Uh, like uh, Gabe's character at Ed Rahel, I thought that. I thought once again, him and Chad had pretty good moments together. Uh, and I like kind of the, I think out of like the versatility you know, that was a fun part because I feel like Gabe was definitely like the jack, jack of all trades that kind of got through pretty much like everything that was outside of combat. He was pretty much the guy doing all the survival checks, all the scouting. Yeah. Now, we all we all split it up, but I felt like, you know, I felt like playing the kind of roguelike character he was, I thought that he definitely fulfilled his role to the team. You know, I feel like it was like if there's one person to count on, it was Ed Rahel to get this to get things going, you know. I enjoyed I enjoyed the sparing episode. <laughs> we just, it was, what wow, was it? Yeah. We had no. Oh yeah, problems. the sparring when you guys were fighting. There you go. The sparring. Oh, that was a good dad, one. That was episode we got our name. It was. That's right, Champions of Light. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the acronym. <laughs> just Man. don't put it together. <laughs> don't think about it too much. C for <laughs> champions. The rest of it <laughs> uh, for light. <laughs> But people don't uh, that are watching don't realize the the length of time uh, between our recordings, you know, because you know one session takes a, a month to be fully released. Um, so that actual session in real life was like a year ago, but it was like yeah, really just it was like it, six episodes ago. <laughs> but it was like a year ago. That's crazy. I didn't think on that. Wow. Yeah. Well. Yeah, but I, I, I thought that everything that we did kind of like in like a camp, you know, kind of all the funny banter, I thought was always Or even the like. introduction of Eldercar. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that, that was suspenseful. Mm -hmm. I was going to say one of, one of the highlights for me was uh, was 
Um, I didn't know that uh, Brian was going to do a voice for Eldicar. And so when, when he showed up and he had a voice, I was like, oh, this is great. I love it. Um, I'm a big fan of, of doing voices and stuff. So um, that was awesome, Brian. Glad you could join us. Thank you, Thank you Brian. Brian. I asked, I are you going to hurt us? And he goes, maybe. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I was going to wish you that too. That was one of my favorite parts of the moment in the entire time. <laughs> That might have been like my favorite from a humor perspective. But maybe. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect yeah. delivery. I'm a strong, independent cool. woman. That one was fun too. Uh, Dala, yep. That was cool. Dala had some good lines too. I'm a strong independent woman. Um, so I've made up my mind yet. <sighs> uh, cool. Any other highlights? When Edra Hill got out of Ghost for the first time. That was pretty fun. Yeah. All the gifts, yeah. I, I like the one where we were up at camp and we were doing like a night shift. I think it was a sweep like a tree or something like that. And then it was like, I kept, like, I kept on failing to like wake up. That's like the flower and the hair and all that scenario. I don't remember. I remember that was just a funny session. I uh, like that session. I don't, I don't remember exactly what happened there, but I remember that was a good one. You know, because I think that's when we we're dealing with still the spiders, I believe. That was back when we were dealing with the spiders. It was pretty early on. Yeah. Yeah. I think some of my highlights, I feel like everyone settled into their characters well. Uh, and so it was just really cool hearing all the voices and interaction and everything. That was really cool. And then shout out to John, because I felt like we threw some crazy curveballs at you. <laughs> and there's sometimes I'm like, I, I don't even know what he's going to do. <laughs> um, so I thought you handled them well. So. <laughs> it, it, it depended on the session. I mean, some sessions, um, you know, I've, I've been doing it for a little while. So I've been thrown some really weird things in my time. Um, so I wouldn't say you guys have been the the craziest, but uh, I feel like there were a really few good. sessions where you guys got pretty close. Where I was just like, "Are you memeing right now? Like, do you actually <laughs> want me to entertain this thought? And this is where we're going, or or are you just are you just joking? And we need to get back to what we're talking about." And and there were some times where I was surprised you guys were serious. <laughs> it was all <laughs> serious. I have no regrets. Chad has no regrets about anything that's happened. With My only regret is that we did not go to like the dang swamp of the dead so we can get some loot. But that's you know that is a regret. You got so close. I so wanted to get the loot. I was like, God, it's please. in that tower with all the spiders, man. It was it was this close. Like I was I worried. Very close to dead. I thought we were all dead. That's the. I think that's the first time I thought it was gonna be a dull party. I was like, I, I was in the middle of that <laughs> session. I was thinking, this might actually legitimately end in a TPK. Yeah. I think that was the only moment in the campaign where I had that thought where I was like, they might die before this session is over. Oh, God. Yeah. But it worked out. That was before I came. You guys made it okay. Okay. Well, it's almost. All right, guys. Last big question. Uh, all along, we've been doing these debriefs and we've been connecting what we've experienced to just life and also faith. So just taking a moment to think back throughout our whole campaign. Um, what do you think are some things that people who might view this or who have seen all of it or even just a few episodes, um, what are some things that um, you're taking away from this campaign that they might be able to take away from this campaign? Like that's a positive thing or something that uh, can give them kind of hope in life or in faith. That uh, God can use anyone uh, when you look at the diversity and and the flaws of our characters, um, your character, <laughs> <laughs> my character has no flaws, and that's not a flaw because I said that. <laughs> First thing that kind of comes to mind for me was all the times Chad and Haley had uh, differences. They always were able to kind of talk it out and figure out how to make a compromise and not just kill each other. So like. Not killing each other is always good. <laughs> not killing each other is always good. Learning how to dissolve each other's differences. Yeah, yeah I think like, you know, we look at it from like a sense of like, okay, like, if you're with a group of people, whether like a church or a group of Christian friends, and you actually want to do something that's like, hey, let's push back 
the darkness, you know, let's see someone that's actually like a light to the world, whether it be a community outreach or a planning. Everyone is so unique. Everyone has a different upbringing. Everyone has a different viewpoint of things. And learning to navigate those waters, I think, and learning to keep your uniqueness, keep your own uniqueness without compromising the entire structure. You know, I think that's kind of, I don't know, when I look back at the entire campaign, I think that's kind of been the unintentional or maybe intentional theme of the whole thing. It's just really like, imagine if you're, if you're doing something like this, you know, especially with a bunch of people who are creative, we all are creative outlook on doing the world. So, and even if you feel like you're not creative, that's still an outlook, you know, a, a lot of much more outlook and say, Hey, let me not become so caught up in my own way that I separate from everybody. Let me keep my uniqueness wall feeding into the whole that we all go forward uh, in the same direction. And I think really encouraging that individuality in every every person, especially those who are brothers in the faith or sisters in the faith. I think it's I think it's very important. I think sometimes when we're in like a church community or whatever, sometimes it, you have this pressure to hey, let me conform to whatever else is doing. But sometimes we need people that are willing to get out of the complacency to kind of stir things up because. God is bigger than just what we see, you know, uh, God's, his, his, his glory and his personality is seen in every human being that's alive, which is pretty cool. I would say also exercising in the way to do things the right way, or in, in our case, the godly way. Mm -hmm. um, an example would be just like throughout the campaign, it's like learning also how this world works and even how how John is going to think about certain things and how he's going to react or his characters are going to react to the things that we do. So at the same time, it's like, okay, well, how can we act? What can I do, right? So that it's the better, so that it has the better outcome possible. Whatever my vision is of what's going to happen, what's going to be the best way to get to that vision kind of thing. So like always practicing, always getting to, to that. And there's always this, um, this unexpectancy of the role of the, the dice, but at the same time, it's like, okay, well, even if the role of the dice is there or not, it doesn't matter because of the choices that we make sometimes don't require that much, that that higher AC or or that lower AC or or even that, that cap there. So it also changes with the way that we keep exercising ourselves. And in real life, that's exactly what we what we keep learning. Like whenever it says in, in First Timothy, like exercising godliness, right? It's like, okay, well, we, we go through life and we understand what's right, what's wrong, thanks to God. Uh, but at the same time, we that, that doesn't mean that there's no effort involved also in the way in the way that we keep learning about things and how can we do things better so that it has a better outcome or at least a least worse outcome. Do, do least you know what? Outcome. Yeah, I guess like a not so worse outcome kind of thing, like improving, kind of improving yes. that, that thing. It's what I meant. So always exercising that it's, it's always important because there is there is a result. There is always a result. There is always, if, if you're involved in it, if, if we actually want to, and if we put the effort in, there's going to be a result. It's not a, maybe it will happen. No, there will be a result. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, that is it. Really cool. I think for uh, me, uh, just God can help you dream new dreams. I think sometimes you're like going along in life and then something happens, there's a breakup or something. And you're, your guy or, comes along and stabs your first dream. What was that? A new guy comes along and stabs your first dream. There you go. Uh, <laughs> um, and and you can either get stuck in that moment or you can like allow God to do something new. Uh, so for that example, like sometimes you're going through a campaign, you like I can't wait to make a new character because I don't like this character. <laughs> you know, that was the case. Like I really liked my character, and then he died. I was like, oh man, what'd I do? And then I think I had a choice. Like I get stuck there or I can create a new character and be fair to that new character because the new character is gonna be different than my old character. And and I gotta role play the new character. And what are some things that this character, new character can do that was different than the old character? And how can I enjoy this new character um, in ways that I can my old character? So um, I think the same things in life. Again, we all hit things that we're not expecting. And you can either get stuck there and you'd be like, okay, here's a new normal. What can I learn and how can I dream a new dream of God? So, yeah, that's good. It, it's similar to, to mine, which is, um, so I've got that, that different perspective of being the, the DM or the lore master in this system. That's what they, they call my role, um, where, uh, 
uh, for me, the, the, the takeaway is, is um, similar to what, to what you said, Derek, uh, but uh, the importance of learning to roll with the punches and to just keep going. Um, you know, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's the, a common joke made about D and D and other tabletop role playing games and, and just, uh, you know, uh, parties do crazy stuff. They throw wrenches in the DM's plans. They, they derail things. They go totally different directions than what you're expecting. Um, and it's a, it's a joke, but it's a joke for a reason because it happens all the time and it's just, you expect it. Um, and the only way to prevent it from happening is to like, do like a hard and fast railroad the entire campaign, which would ruin what I love about tabletop role-playing games, which is the spontaneity and the ability to do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, uh, similarly in life, uh, we're going to have times where we're planning on something we've been working towards something. And at times for years that we've been moving towards a specific goal. And then it happens occasionally, maybe in a single afternoon, all of our plans have been derailed and we've got to change course. And there's, there's a lot to unpack when that kind of thing happens. Um, but, but the first thing we have to do is be able to get back up and roll with it and, and lean on God. Trust God is going to get us through that regardless of what my plan was, he has a plan and he knows what's going on with me. He knows what I'm going through. He was not surprised that my plans were derailed, which means he can take care of me and he can guide me through that. And it's going to be okay. Um, when, when lives get derailed, it's a little more stressful than when a campaign of a game that we're playing with friends gets derailed. Um, but similarly, you guys rely on me to fix the story or to take the story wherever you guys need it to go. Um, and I'm nowhere, 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 nowhere near as good at doing that as God is. And uh, God is uh, perfectly able to take our story exactly where it needs to go. Um, for uh, uh, the two things I've learned in my life, there's two things that happen uh, with God. And every time he does something, it accomplishes two things every single time. And it's really simple and I love it. And I'm going to share it with you guys and maybe it'll change your life or maybe you'll be like, duh, or whatever. But it was really profound when I learned this and it's uh, everything that God does accomplishes two things. One, it's for the good of man. And two, it's for the glory of God. It's for the good of man and the glory of God. And that is because in the Bible, it says, he makes all things work together for the good of those who believe in him and are called according to his purpose. That seems pretty straightforward. If you believe in God, that's the only one you got to worry about because everyone's been called by God. Okay. Everyone's yeah. been called according to his purpose. So if you believe in him, he's making things work together for your good. Um, sometimes we get confused. Sometimes we think that we're the ones supposed to get the glory. Uh, no <laughs> glory goes to God. And so, um, that's something that's, that's really helped me in, in my life. Uh, when my plans have been derailed, when, when my dreams have fallen apart, when things that I have pursued have uh, ended up failing, uh, recognizing that God still has a plan and that plan will be for my good and his glory. And I get up and I keep walking and I keep doing it, roll with the punches, go with the flow, whatever you want to say, but uh, God's in control and he knows what he's doing. I don't, want to, I don't want to speak for everyone, but I kind of feel like our all of our lives were kind of derailed after COVID hit, especially for me. Yeah. I had a lot of plans to stay in Florida, obviously. So now, if people don't know, I am now back home in Alabama. I don't remember if we ever said that to the audience. Um, but. I don't know. I think, Derek, you might be the only person that Hannah and I told this, but... Uh... Um, before everything with COVID, Hannah and I were actually in the early stages of planning a church plant. Um, and we're going to be planting a church, uh, in Orlando and, uh, everything with COVID happened and it kind of derailed that. And, um, we could have continued, but we didn't feel like we were supposed to. It was one of those things where it's like, okay, well we could do it, but you know, we feel like God's telling us not yet. And, right. uh, you know, now we're in a, a great situation. I'm working at an amazing church with wonderful leadership, um, 
that's, you know, developing us and we're able to, to be a blessing there. And, you know, God's doing an awesome work, but uh, yeah, hundred percent, dude, I get it. I mean, you know, you, you ended up uprooting your life and moving to Alabama. I had to put like the next big chapter of my life was just immediately like, eh, nope, not yet. Yeah. And uh, yeah, a lot of derailing happened last year. A lot of it. Well, cool guys. Well, thank you so much for sharing. Thanks so much for playing uh, incredible campaign. Uh, will we continue in some format? We don't know. We'll see. And uh, thank you for everyone who's been viewing and looking and watching and listening to us. I hope you guys have had fun as well. Thank you guys. Remember, we love you. More importantly, God loves you. See you around.